the Prime Minister just arriving with his wife. It's quite booing in the crowd there. Um, well, and you can hear it. There is really quite a lot of booing, actually. Wow. A substantial amount. So, didn't see that coming. That's quite a moment. The Times Theory. let you go after you made up a quote. Why did you make up a quote? It was a grave error to appoint Chris Pincher to your government. Yes, I think it was a mistake, and I apologise for, uh, for it. I think in, in, in hindsight it was uh, the wrong thing to do. Uh, I apologise to everybody who's been uh, badly affected by it. And I just want to make absolutely clear that there's no place in this government for uh, anybody who... Uh, is predatory or who uh, abuses their position of power. Did you want to joke, though, pincher by name, pincher by nature? Well, I, what I can tell you is that uh, if I look at the background of this and why I regret it so much, is that uh, about three years ago, uh, there was a complaint made against uh, Chris Pincher in the Foreign Office. Uh, the complaint was, was uh, cleared up. He apologised. Uh, it was raised with me. Uh, in uh, orally, there was a. I was I was briefed on what had had happened, mm -hmm. and you know, if, if I had my time again, I would think back on it. Could you just confirm, and I just appreciate a yes or a no, that you met with the former KGB officer Alexandra Lebanov, uh, Lebedev, when you were foreign secretary without officials on the 28th of April 2018? Well, uh, I, I, I'd have to I, I'd have to check, but. Uh, well, that's, Are you having that, a lapse of memory again? That, no, but that's uh, but you know if you're, you're asking me a very specific question about a very specific date, and I really, I, 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 I would have to, yeah. I'd have to get back. I certainly have met the gentleman in question, who's, uh, who's, uh, uh, who, who used to be the proprietor of the London Evening Standard. I when I was, uh, when I was mayor of London. So I, 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 I certainly not going to deny having met. Uh, Alexander Lebedev, I, I certainly have. I as far as I remember, uh, he used to own uh, the London Evening Standard. Yes, but with officials, when you were Foreign Secretary, did you meet with officials or without officials? Look, I, I, I've certainly met him without officials. Right. And, uh, you know, as I say, he's a, he's a perhaps you could write to us proprietor of a... Of a perhaps you could write to us with a specific very answer. Ha very happy to... to very happy a specific to answer to that very specific question. Yes, okay. yes. Right. Meg Hillier. Prime Minister, I mean, you said you met her without officials. Was that presumably was when you were Mayor of London? When you were Foreign Secretary, did you meet Alexander Lebedev? I, I, I think uh, I probably officials? did, but I but um, probably did. I, I, as I said, I would like, I would need to check. You, you used to regularly meeting him. I mean, is it probably because you meet him often, or probably because you can't remember? I, I, I've met him on a very few occasions. As Foreign uh, when, Secretary, when, when, when uh, if the, uh, on the occasion you're mentioning, if that was when I was Foreign Secretary, then yes. Without officials. Yes, I mean, that, that makes sense. Did you report yes. to your officials that you had met him? Uh, I think I, I think I did mention it. Yes. And where did you meet him? Um, you know, uh, I, I met him uh, in Italy, as it happens. But I, I really, you know, I, I forget. Good afternoon. I want to begin by answering the big question that people have been asking in the last forty-eight hours, and that is. Is this government asking you, uh, the people, the public, to do one thing, while senior people here in government do something else? Have we been asking you to make sacrifices to obey social distancing, uh, stay at home, while some people have been basically flouting those rules and endangering lives? And it's because I take this matter so seriously, and frankly, it is so serious, that I can tell you today, I've had extensive face-to-face -face conversations with Dominic Cummings, and I've concluded that in travelling to find the right kind of childcare, at the moment when both he and his wife were about to be incapacitated by coronavirus, and when he had no alternative, I think he followed the instincts of every father and every parent, and I do not mark him down. The health advice was all already, especially for the very elderly, you know, people should take every precaution. Mm. You shouldn't be doing things that you're not meant to be doing. You should be trying to reduce all their contact, all your contacts. So what happened? Uh, I said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm going to see the Queen. And I said, 
What on earth are you talking about? Of course you can't go and see the Queen. He said, uh, well, that's what, I, that's what I do every Wednesday, sod this, I'm gonna go and see her. Uh, I said, um, I really don't think you should do that. Look around this office. As we spoke, we were in the outer office just outside his study. It was basically empty, partly because people in that office were isolating, isolating at home with symptoms. So I said to him, there's people in this office who are isolating. You might have coronavirus, I might have coronavirus. You can't go and see the Queen. What if you give, what if you go and see her and then give the Queen coronavirus? The Prime Minister has expressed full confidence in the Home Secretary Priti Patel, despite a report into claims of bullying, which found that she broke the rules on ministerial behaviour. I'm sorry that my behaviour has upset people, and I've never intentionally um, set out to upset anyone. I work with thousands of brilliant civil servants every single day, and we work together day in, day out to deliver on the agenda of this government. And I'm absolutely sorry for anyone that I have upset. I absolutely do have confidence in Priti Patel. I think she's a fantastic Home Secretary. Uh, it's never an easy job. Anybody who's been Home Secretary will testify that that is one of the toughest jobs in government and there's a big, big task ahead of us now. Let me ask you about a barefaced lie. When right. you were in Michael Howard's team, you denied to him you were having an affair. Uh, it turned out you were. And he sacked you for that. Why did you lie to your party? Well, I mean, again, I mean, with great respect, on, on that, um, I never had any conversation with Michael Howard about that matter and, uh, you know, I don't... You did lie propose, to him. Well, you know, I don't propose to go into all that again. I, I, think, I, I don't think, blame I you. No, well, why should I? May I begin by saying that I understand and share the anger up and down the country at seeing number 10 staff seeming to make light of lockdown measures. And I can understand how infuriating it must be to think that the people who have been setting the rules have not been following the rules, Mr Speaker, because I was also furious to see that clip. And Mr Speaker, I apologise, I apologise unreservedly for the offence that it has caused up and down the country and I apologise for the impression that it gives. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. You're tightening the rules again for millions of people tonight. How can you stand at that lectern exactly where some of your team laughed and joked about Covid rules and tell people they must now follow your new instructions? And are you really asking the public to believe that you had no idea what was going on under your own roof. This morning, I spoke to John Robinson, a constituent of the member for Lichfield. I want to tell you his story. When his wife died of COVID, John and his family obeyed the Prime Minister's rules. He didn't see her in hospital. He didn't hold her hand as she died. Their daughters and grandchildren drove a hundred miles up the motorway, clutching a letter from the funeral director in case they were questioned by the police. They didn't have a service in the church. John's son-in-law stayed away because he would have been the forbidden seventh mourner. Doesn't the Prime Minister realise that John would have given the world to hold his dying ha wife's hand even if it was just for nine minutes. Yeah. But he didn't, because he followed the Prime Minister's rules. Rules that we now know the Prime Minister blithely, repeatedly and deliberately ignored. Yes. After months of insulting excuses, today's half-hearted apology will never be enough for John Robinson. If the Prime Minister had any respect for John, and the millions like him who sacrificed everything to follow the rules, he'd resign. Yeah. 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 But he won't, mm. because he doesn't respect John. No. Yeah. He doesn't respect the sacrifice of the British public. No. He is a man without shame. Yeah. Yeah. This is about your integrity. Okay. The programme includes your reaction as you listen to a phone call in which your friend Darius Guppy asks you to supply the address of a journalist yes. so that he can have him physically assaulted, the words beaten up and broken ribs 
are said to yes. And you, having heard that, you tell your friend, Darius Guppy, you will supply the address. What does that say about you, Boris Johnson? Well, Aren't you, in fact, making up quotes, lying to your party leader, wanting to be part well, of uh, someone being physically assaulted. You're a nasty piece of work, aren't you? Prime Minister, this is about truth, isn't it? It's about whether people can believe what you say. And we now know that those who speak for you over the last few days have said things that turned out to be untrue. Did you lie to them? No, and uh, let, me, let me explain what, uh, what, what happened. So uh, this is the... Uh, we're talking about a series of uh, events over... Uh, or a series of appointments over several years. So... Uh, Chris Pincher came into government as Deputy Chief Whip uh, before I became uh, Prime Minister. Uh, he was moved to the, to the Foreign Office. Uh, he then went on to, to be a Minister for, uh, for Housing. Indeed. And uh, we then moved him back to be, uh, to be Deputy Chief Whip. Uh, as I say, uh, about two and a half years ago, I got this uh, complaint. Uh, it, was, it was something that uh, was only raised with me very cursorily. But I wish... Okay. Uh, that we had, uh, I in particular, had acted on it and uh, that he had not uh, continued in government. Because he then okay. went on, I'm afraid, to behave, as far as we can see, according to the allegations that we have, very, very badly.